everyone. Welcome to Pumpkin Horror. Now today I'm going to touch base on some of my horror figures. I will do these in groups like my uh, Jason Voorhees. I'll do those in groups. My Predators, my Xenomorphs, as well as uh, I got one Freddy Krueger and a couple of Michael Myers. We'll do all those together because there's not enough there to do in one video. But anyway, long story short, we're going to touch base on this particular character. It is the character from the Hellraiser series. It is called Pinhead, according to the fans. Now, Clyde Barker in himself did not care for the name uh, Pinhead, as according to his book, The Hellbound Heart. This was, in fact, an ambiguous figure. They weren't 100% sure whether it was female or male, though there is, in fact, a uh, a new movie or a new reboot coming in for these Hellraiser series, hopefully. As we just heard that Clyde Barker did win back the American rights to um, the uh, Hellraiser series. Now, obviously over there in England, that's a different story. They're the first two, I think, they were English slash American made. Not sure about that. But anyway, he does have the uh, rights to copyrights to the American movies as, as well as the characters and stuff. So he does own them now. Okay, uh, but anyway, long story short, we will get into the actual uh, characters here. This one's Pinhead, according to the fans, okay? Now, as you can see, this is, in fact, a bobblehead, but it's an extremely heavy bobblehead. I got it years ago. Can't remember where I got it from, but when I seen it, I was like, ooh. And I actually checked it out, and I like how heavy it was. The head in itself seems like it's made out of ceramic or some kind of uh, poly uh, material. That is very heavy in nature. The pins on the head are actually made real real pins. They're not plastic or anything like that. So I'm going to show you what this thing looks like up close by shutting this down. And then we'll get into the other characters that I have too. I have a NECA figure based on him too as well. Alright, it seems like the lighting is doing quite well here. Because I had to reposition and get a new board. Because the white board, I kind of whitewashed uh, the figures and stuff. But this one here seems to really stand out really nice. So that's a good thing, okay? All right, in the back here, you can see his skin is stretched. When it comes to the Cenobites, they're more like tortured souls. And they have a sexualized nature to them originally. Um, but that was the, the coolest thing about the movie. Not so much the sexualized thing, but the torturing, the, the twisting of the skin, and doing many crazy things to the body. Uh, that's what I like about the Hellraiser series. And I will tell you this. The Hellraiser series is in fact my all-time favorite horror figure. When it comes to Pinhead and any of the Cenobites. The Tortured Souls. That's another Clive Barker figure. They're from a different dimension in Hell. Uh, these guys right here, when it comes to uh, Pinhead and the rest of the characters. They are wrapped around the Leviathan, I believe they call it. It's a different part of the realm and... They're kind of like, the Leviathan is like the leader of the bunch. He creates the actual Cenobites. And I guess Pinhead was created by Leviathan as well as the other characters. But anyway, Tortured Souls is definitely from the Primordium. They're a different realm in Hell, okay? But they're very, very cool, very Tortured-like, very similar to the Cenobites. I wish they would put a lot of effort and make a really decent movie based on the Tortured Souls. That would be very cool. Alright. Anyway, that's what this guy looks like. And he's got a decent amount of weight. Okay. He's really heavy. Like I said, he's made of a heavy material. It's not a plastic at all. Alright, pinhead. NECA. NECA makes this figure here. Miramax. Okay, obviously. Miramax, I think, is also um, Michael Myers, I believe it is. But anyway. That's my uh, bobblehead pinhead. The uh, the pins in themselves are actually made of a real metal, okay, which I think is cool. So you gotta be careful with these because you can easily bend them. I did have one down here that was, as you can see here, I think it's this one here. It was all kinds of bent, and I had to kind of straighten it out a little bit. But anyway, that is my ceramic bobblehead or whatever kind of poly poly material that it's made out of. But he. It is heavy, but it's a very cool looking figure. Okay. All right, let's get into the NECA figure based on this. Now, I can't get this thing to stand. I can, but uh, he's a real royal pain in the ass. So, I'm not going to bother with it. I'm just going to show you what he looks like, okay? 
I'm going to pull his gown down so we can get him looking pretty decent here. This guy, and I will tell you this, it is a very nice looking figure the way they did it. So let me pull this camera back. And I'm going to show you the accessories that come with this particular figure. Okay, now this is the NECA figure based on Pinhead. Let's see, let me just get that move that in close. And as you can see in the back, very similar to the bobblehead that I just showed you. Okay, and these pins are a plastic. Okay, so let me show you the rest of the body here. And the actual skirt is made of some kind of a shiny material, which really does look cool. He does wear this particular outfit in certain movies, and he looks absolutely amazing in it. All right, that's the back of it right there. Now, people criticize the movies as they progressed, obviously, for obvious reasons. Dimension Films, who owns the rights to these guys right now, Merrimax and all that good stuff, the, um, they kind of miss, uh, they kind of abuse the actual franchise by not giving the director and the producers of these movies enough money to actually do something decent with them. The movies got stupid after a while. No offense, but, you know, I, I know it's my all-time favorite um, uh, franchise, but the way they mishandled it, I'm not a fan of that. But anyway, the last movie, Judgment, they did okay. Doug Bradley, he's officially done with uh, Pinhead. He's a little too old to be doing him, no offense. Uh, when it comes to Doug Bradley and himself, he is Pinhead. There's no other replacement unless you ambiguously change the, uh, the actual figure to a female. Then we can get some really sexy looking females, okay? Because I've seen some pictures as well as some videos based on a female version of Pinhead. And they look absolutely amazing. I would be cool in this new reboot if they would actually do a female version of the Pinhead. That would be cool. But anyway, that's what this looks like so far, okay? And like I said, the skirt is made of a shiny material. It looks very cool on him. Now the NECA stand that it comes with... Uh, you can get him to stand, but unfortunately, it's a royal pain in the ass if you don't do it right, okay? Because he will topple over, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay him down and show you the accessories that come with it. Okay, first, the weapons are traditional to pinhead. All right, obviously, this particular hook right here. It's got a little blood on it, okay? Let me show you the other end here. You're supposed to hook it on the string that's wrapped around his waist, and they pretty much just hang there, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I gotta hook them back up, so. This one here is also another traditional weapon uh, for Pinhead, and, okay, and that's this guy here. Let me try to hold it that way so you can see it. It's like a saw, like a hacksaw. Alright. And it's got a little blood on it, if you can see it. But those hang on his waist and stuff, or you can put them in his hands. I like to put this this one here in his left hand. He looks cool because in the right hand it's shaped as you can see. He is capable of holding something. So what could it be? It would be Le Marchand's box. Okay. That is the Le, Le Mans configuration. Okay. And I do have a full size one I'm going to show you here. All right. And that's what she looks like here. Let me get my fingers out of the way so you can actually see what it looks like. Okay. Now there are different variations of uh, Le Marchand's box or the Le Mans configuration. The more expensive ones are actually six sided they have six different designs on all six sides of the cube but in most standard uh, uh, lament configurations as you can see right here they are uh, designed to have them on the opposite side of each other they're pretty much the same design so I'm gonna flip this over and as you can see it's got the same design okay same thing here alright and we flip that over to the opposite end 
they're a three-sided design and there is a six-sided design but obviously they're, they're expensive but um, the lament configuration is the coolest aspect about um, Hellraiser in my opinion but anyway pinhead Funko Pop okay now articulation wise his head does move and his arms do not move okay but he does hold the lament configuration okay as you can see his head or his pins are a little bit different but he's got a very cool look about him Funko Pop they got so many copyrights to these characters that there's an ungodly amount of designs out there based on any type of character you can get your hands on okay but that is my Funko Pop version I'd love to get a hold of some other uh, Cenobites like uh, Chatterer as well as I think they call her the woman and I can't remember the other guy, but it's been a while, but anyway, there are other characters that are based on the original um, Hellraiser, the first two movies. Now, as you can see right here, this is the Mezco figure of it. Oh, as you can see, it's a little bit bigger. Okay, and then you see the strings right here. You can kind of just lay the hooks on here. Alright, he's being a pain, so hang on for a second here, guys. I'm going to lose my lemon configuration here. There we go. Alright, now as you can see, I'm going to put him up here so you can see him. And then we're going to move in close. Hang on for a second here. What is up with that? Oh, maybe that's just the way it is. Okay. Alright, now... Okay, now we're going to turn that on, and we're going to move it in a little bit. You get an idea of what he looks like, okay? This is the Mezco version of uh, Hellraiser. Now, I will tell you something about Mezco. They have some fantastic designs, nicely detailed figures, but they are a lot more expensive than a NECA figure, okay? They do have, which I have another Mezco figure. I'm going to show you that here in a second. Um, and then I'm going to show you my lament configurations. But anyway, this is a very cool looking character in the way that they designed him. As you can see, the design of the suit, the, um, the tools that he uses, his hands, everything about this thing really stands out. One I've seen is on Amazon.com picture wise. And if you actually go to the, neck, uh, the Mezco uh, website, they show... Like a uh, dark background that really accentuate the figure. It looks absolutely amazing, okay? And I had to get it, but it, I think at the time when I did get it, it was like $30. But I'm sure it's a lot more expensive today. Now you can see the hands have a very cool color scheme to it. Right, I'm going to show you the lament configuration here, guys, okay? And that's what she looks like here. Right. Now again, this is probably the three-sided uh, figure. So, yep, on each side is the same image. Okay, this is the three-sided uh, lament configuration. Like I said, there is in fact, on the rare occasion, that there are a six-sided figure of the lament configuration. Those are the more expensive ones. They're really some nice-looking um, Le Marchand boxes out there. Absolutely cool-looking. And I've seen some images where people actually created... Um, the lament configuration in their own interpretation and some of them designs are absolutely breathtaking I wish they would sell them on an individual basis I would love to uh, just collect the uh, Hellraiser boxes I think that would be very cool they got a few of them out there but like I said they are a bit pricey okay so with that in mind let's just pull him down all right we'll get him right out of the way now uh, just so for the record let me show you what he looks like up close Okay, the eyes are breathtaking on this thing. They really did a fantastic job. Right. Again, the pins on this one here are made of a metal. They're not plastic. Okay, it's just like this bobblehead right here. All right, as you can see, they're very similar. But anyway, I love collecting pinhead. Um, because he's a very, very cool character. He is my all-time favorite horror character, hands down. But you know the thing about uh, Pinhead? 
is mask wise there is not a decent mask out there simply because you can't create a mask based on uh, Doug Bradley's face because he looked absolutely perfect and to actually create a mask like that would be almost virtually impossible it is a makeup application type situation you can't actually create a mask that would actually look decent on you it's just almost impossible uh, when it comes to other characters like Michael Myers and stuff like that obviously that was a mask Jason Voorhees their masks uh, Billy the puppet he looks absolutely amazing but when it comes to Pinhead they can't seem to get it right because you would have to mold it after Doug Bradley's head and I haven't seen anybody do that yet. I'd like to see Trick or Treat Studios step up and do something based on Doug Bradley's mold. I know there's molds out there based on his uh, face and stuff, but I haven't really seen any real decent mask based on uh, Pinhead. Okay. But anyway, the back of this, now this is a little bit different as you can see in the back here. He's got the hook and everything, and technically it's supposed to be connected with a black strap. Like you see in the back here on this one here. It is a little bit different as I do it. Yeah, so. But it is cool the way they did that. You can see the skin is stretched. Okay. I think that's very cool anyway. It's different but it's cool. Okay. But this is a very cool figure from Mezco. Okay. Anyway. Moving on. Let's get into the bigger figure that I have based on Pinhead. It is the largest one that I have. And I'm going to have to do something with the camera because this thing is absolutely huge. Alright, there it is. You're like, I can't see the whole thing. And I'm going to have to pick up the camera and show you. Let me pull it back. There we go. Alright, that's what it looks like. I'm going to turn this on. Oh, it's already on. Okay. So I'm going to move in a little bit so you can actually see what it looks like up close. This is my Mesco figure based on, I believe it's a 12 inch figure. And I got this for like 60 bucks at the time. And I'm sure, obviously, it is a lot more expensive today. Everything is. Everything just goes up in price. Nothing goes down, in my opinion. <laughs> but anyway, this particular figure is very cool looking. They did a really fantastic job on it. Okay? All the way down to the skirt here. And everything here is one solid piece, which makes it easy. As you can see, when I pick it up, one big piece you don't have no moving parts now on the bottom of this as you can see it's very simple you just set it down and just forget about it and it looks amazing okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the camera down and show you the actual figure up close okay okay here we go I'm gonna shut this off okay now again the tools that he uses as you can see now these are strapped up a little bit different than these guys here. I'm going to show you the Mesco. The other Mesco is strapped up the same way as you can see it goes all the way up to his chest. Okay. The NECA figure you really can't see it because it's not actually visible. Okay. But there was in fact a strap on here. I don't know what I did with it in order to get it to hold. I'm going to have to figure out what the hell happened there. But anyway, we'll get those tools, walk, uh, tools working again. Okay, these, as you can see, is kind of like a hacksaw. Okay, it's very cool looking. Over here is his other weapon. He does have a hook type one. I'm not sure what happened to that. Or it's right here in his hand. Duh! There it is. Here it's right here, guys. Okay. He's also got the lament configuration again. All right, see that? It's very cool. But like I said about the lament configuration, okay, I'd love to see them actually make a whole bunch of them at a reasonable price. Okay, so now let me show you the face on this thing. I can actually sit it down. You can actually see it. Okay, let me pull it back a little bit. He's a very cool looking figure. So if you ever want to get the Mezco figure, it will cost you at least 60 bucks or more. If you can find it cheaper, like on eBay, that would be awesome because it is an awesome figure if you're into Pinhead. Okay. Like I said, this whole thing is made of like a plastic, which is cool. All you got to do is just put it on your stand and just forget about it. You don't have to worry about no moving parts or 
putting them on a stand or anything like that. NECA figures, they're okay in my opinion when it comes to that kind of stuff. But um, they are a pain in the butt sometimes to get them working. Now we're going to get into uh, some of the lament configurations that I have. This is the Rubik's Cube version, as you can see. I still ain't figured it out how to line these things up and stuff. You see? See? I would have to spend all day just trying to figure this part out. See? But anyway, that is a Rubik's Cube version of the Lemon configuration. Okay? So now I'm going to get into this final one here. And this will be the last of my uh, pinhead uh, collection here. But like I said about the uh, Lament configuration, I'd love to start collecting them. Just the boxes. But anyway, this is my Lament configuration. I actually got it off of Etsy.com. It's got a nice shine to it. It is made of a solid wood, so keep that in mind. It's not plastic or anything. Alright. Now I'm going to show you the three sides on this. Right here and on the opposite side will be the same thing. See? In most cases, okay, they are a three-sided configuration. Like I said, there are six-sided configurations out there, but they're rare, rare. Okay, and they're probably up there in price too. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the box. Not screen. Hooks come out. Ah! <laughs> but anyway, this is my Lemon configuration. It also comes with a stand. Okay. So if you were to order this anywhere, even on Amazon, it would come with a stand. It'll tell you that too. And you just kind of just stick it on there. And I'm going to show you what that looks like here. Get him out of the way. And there you go. Just like that. Turn it on. And I'm going to let you stare at it. Because we're going to end this video here. Anyway, that is my entire collection based on my pinhead. Uh, Hellraiser. I don't have any other Cenobites. I would love to get a hold of some of them. Uh, my Tortured Souls, I actually got them on eBay for like 50, 60 bucks. But they were like a set of four. The phone's ringing at the most inconvenient time. But anyway, it's a set of four. And I got them for like 60 bucks. They weren't in boxes or anything like that. But they came in. They were in pristine condition. Alright. So, um, but anyway, that's kind of distracting. I don't know why, but Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and stop this here. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys later. Okay, bye.